surprised the surprise that batteries are all the All right. Okay, that's quite right. So hold it here. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm Harry Guinness. I organise these events. We're gonna we're gonna use one microphone. I think we'll pass it between us. Otherwise, we're gonna get feedback. Um, I organise these events. For, I'm the Dublin representative for Atheist Ireland, and I'm joined today by Dr. Roger Yates from uh, UCD. So you should probably introduce yourself. You'll most likely do a better job of it than I will. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Roger Yates, UCD. Uh, you could didn't you? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm here to uh, represent the uh, the vegan contingent of Ireland um, against. Uh, an avid flesh eater or something you said on yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what kind of details do you need? Um, just tell us a little bit about. I'm going to project because it's going to be much easier. Can everyone at the back hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Will that pick me up okay if I can speak? Yeah, we'd better keep both using the mics. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll try both using the mics. I, I, don't, I don't mind a bit of feedback. I used to be in a band called Soggy Breakthrough and Feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way this is going to work is we're just going to have a discussion about oh, veganism. Our biggest hit was uh, cosmic oscillation. Cosmic oscillation. Yeah. Right. That's all I'm going to talk about now. <laughs> so tell us more about that. Right? Um, so what we're basically going to do is we're just going to have a chat about uh, atheism and veganism and the ethical issues surrounding that. There was a bit of talk on... Uh, oh, I should probably mention, this is being filmed for the YouTube channel. There will be questions and answers at the end. Um, anyone, feel free to ask your question. If you don't want to, sh to show up on YouTube or whatever, mention it to Mick or myself, and we'll organise for that section to be cut, and you won't appear or anything. And can people just chip in any time, or do they have to wait till the end? I'd say wait till the end just for the camera, because we want to get a conversation just for the, the, okay. the video. That answers that. Um, so the way this is going to work is we're just going to have a discussion about the ethical issues surrounding it. Um, as I said, on the Facebook page, there was quite a few people wondering um, how this was relevant to atheism. Um, as Michael was saying the other day to me, um, Atheist Ireland actually has in its charter constitution um, a statement saying that essentially it's going to support, promote ethical atheism. And obviously there's a lot of focus on issues like abortion, and uh, euthanasia and things like that, but there is other ethical issues that Atheist Ireland, probably not this year, but potentially could take a stance on in the future. Veganism may or, or may not be one of them. Um, a second factor for that was uh, Vegan Ireland approached me a few months ago about, uh, about organising a speaker. Uh, this struck me as interesting because quite a few of the prominent members of Atheist Ireland are actually vegetarian, not vegan. And there was some discussion over whether vegetarians were more common in uh, atheist groups, or, or vegetarians were more likely to be atheists than a regular person was. Um, I actually thought about that, and <laughs> it was your point there. <laughs> but I actually thought about that. One thing I thought was um, the, the thought process to become an atheist, where you have to actively question the status quo of being a Catholic in Ireland or whatever, is actually quite similar to the thought process of becoming a vegetarian or a vegan, you've actually got to think about an issue that most people just don't. You know, if you look at most people who are nominally Catholic, a lot of them just simply haven't thought about the issue of whether or not they believe in God. And likewise, I'd imagine that there is a significant portion of people who just have not given any thought whatsoever to the issue of whether or not they should eat meat. Um, I have given thought to the issue and I've decided I should eat meat. Um, there's quite a few people in the room tonight, and Roger obviously, who've given thought to the issue and decided they should eat absolutely no meat, or you know, not even wear animal products or products from animals. So there is the flip side there, but that's just a little bit of background there as to why I felt this was a relevant speaker, so I hope that will um, quiet the naysayers. Um, so, Roger, um, why are you a vegan? Ooh, uh, the hard ones first, eh? Um, well, I mean, for me, it's an ethical thing. Um, I know there are people who describe themselves as um, environmental vegans and health vegans, uh, but for me, it was always about ethics. Um, and so back in the 1970s, 
I, you know, learned a few things, and at first it was about the plight of uh, seals and fishes, and um, so I, I went through a, a weird kind of three-month period where I was boycotting the eating of fishes, but not meat, and then I realized that that didn't kind of make sense. Normally what people do on their paths, yeah, yeah on, on the path to veganism, the usual pattern is to go vegetarian first, although this, this has been challenged at the moment. Um, so I didn't do that, and I actually never got stuck in the, in any kind of vegetarian phase, if you like. Yeah, because that's quite interesting, because um, quite a lot of people seem to be only eat fish rather than eat any sort of meat, and you went the opposite. <coughs> yeah, it was a, it was a, a a weird kind of um, way into it, and, and actually it it came from watching with my young children at the time John Craven's News Round, which was a children's news thing, and they were interviewing some seal killers in the Orkneys. And I always remember the statement which said, well, we kill the seals because they're eating our fish. And that kind of, kind of bounced around in my head. Oh. And, and I thought, <laughs> what do you mean, our fish? Oh. Uh, you know. And my first thought about that was, well, surely all it means is that the seals got to the fish first. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I just thought about it more deeply. At the same time, I was trying to join the Hunts of Atours. And the reason I was attracted to the Hunts of Atours was that they were asking for action and not money. Okay. Yeah, and so that appealed to my kind of activist streak, if you like. Okay, so you got into it um, reasonably late, then it wasn't sort of teenage rebellion. You said that you became it when you had young children. Um, I know it's almost a cliche or sort of thing that the, the, pe the child would rebel in their teenage years against their parents and become a vegetarian, but it's certainly, in my experience, I could well be wrong, that a lot of people do become vegetarian when they're 17, 18, and starting to think about things like that. Well, certainly in terms of colleges, there, there was always a, there was all that kind of cliche. Yeah. That, you know that everybody goes vegetarian when they're at college and the kind of and obviously just a phase. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that would certainly be the case in the 60s and 70s. I think it's broken down a good oh, yeah. deal now. Um, in the same sense that you know you would expect those university years or college years to be also the time when you were getting politicised. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you're getting radicalised by various things, including, you know, Bellady, Trench, and you know, they always say that that's one of the most radicalising things that, that can happen to you, you know. Um, but those those kind of ideas have kind of, you know, fizzled out a little bit now. And so, um, in general terms, academics in particular would probably claim that society is much more passive now. Okay. And there's kind of been forces of kind of pacification which are quite complex. Um, but, I mean, going back to your first point, really, from a sociological point of view, what you're talking about, in your case and my case, is resisting our socialization. Because you were socialized as a Catholic, and I was socialized yeah. as a species, and we resisted it. And I, as I said in, in, in a talk recently, uh, that's a relatively hard thing to do. And also, you're not doing yourself any favors. So the best thing to do, in, or the easiest thing to do, is to swim with the tide and not against it. Yeah. And so, uh, this is probably why, in effect, uh, we're only just seeing the beginning of, um, I don't know, I mean, maybe that's too, too far to say, back, the beginning of the end of Catholicism in Ireland, but yeah. it's, it's starting to be questioned now. If you go back a generation, yeah, you'll probably yeah. find that the amount of people questioning it was very small. Oh, well,